We had been having starting issues with the car, so decided to read the error codes and had a DF165. Accelerator, pedal position sensor circuit stuck and or intermittent. So searching eBay, we found a low mileage pedal for £25, which had only covered 69,000 miles, compared to ours, which was nearly double that. Here I read the codes and show where the diagnostic socket is in the car. So I've got my laptop ready with my diagnostic tool. So you lift up this little piece of rubber underneath the ashtray and there's the OBD diagnostic socket. So you open that up, connect your wire to the diagnostic equipment into there, put the ignition on and then we can start reading the codes. So I'll speed this up, and here's our error code. DF165, accelerator pedal position circuit. So now to remove the old accelerator pedal. There are three bolts and they require a 10mm socket. Access isn't easy, but by removing a panel and using a long extension, it's not too bad a job. I also use the Torx 20 to remove the parking brake switch. So here's the items that I used to replace my accelerator pedal. Obviously I had a new pedal from eBay. That's bolted on with three bolts. I then used a 10 millimeter socket on a very long extension bar to go through the opening of the panel onto the bolts. I also added some tape to the bolts to help with fitting the new bolts back in on the new pedal. I also then used a Torx 20 to remove the electronic handbrake lever. So underneath the footwell, we can see like a felt um, cover. That's actually held on with like a plastic grommet that you need to pull down. And I'll show you the plastic grommet now. There it is. There we are. So you need to remove that down and now we can get access to the accelerator pedal. I'll just show you in there. There's also a lot of electronics and relays as well to the right hand side of the pedal which obviously you need to be careful of. So you can see the lower bolt, the 10 millimeter one, but you can't see the two top bolts, which are quite awkward to get to. So this is the panel we need to remove, which will give us access to the back of that pedal. So I'll remove the handbrake control switch using a Torx 20, disconnect the wiring from that, There we go, we just pull that black piece forward and then the cable comes off. Tuck that away and then we should be able to pull the panel off if we're very careful. And we've got two extra connectors to disconnect. So that's a push in and pull off. Like so. And this green one as well at the bottom. Okay, so now we've got good access to those two top bolts on the pedal. View through that panel now that it's removed and as you can see there's a lot of wiring there and relays so we are going to have to be very careful. You can barely see the two bolts at the top. I've highlighted them in blue there. So I'll start with the bottom bolt. So like I say 10 millimeter socket. That's easy enough to remove. Like so, and then we need to use a lot of extensions and being very careful to reach those two top bolts. And also make sure you don't short any of the electrics out. So that's one bolt out. Now for the last one, which is bolt number three. There we are, the pedal's moving now. So that's our third bolt. As you can see, the pedal's now just being held on by the connector. Now disconnect the wiring plug. So the cable is quite short, so there's not a lot of space or leeway, but you do need to push the two plastic tabs in on the side of the connector 
and then it will come away fairly easily although like I say space is very cramped so that's our accelerator pedal now free so we can get our new one right so I'll show you the connector there we are that's what it looks like so taking a quick look at the pedal There might be some variations in different pedals between the different Renault models. Um, like I said, this is the three bolt version. As I'll show here. Just pop those three bolts in so you can see. There's our connector on the bottom. So it's a simple enough device really. I'm going to show you that connector again. You can certainly see all the relays and the control module on the right hand side. It is packed with wires that and they don't move much. So you do need to be careful. So another angle of it. So hopefully that gives you an idea when you come to reconnect the new pedal. Now to replace the old pedal with the new one from eBay. So all I've got to do now is put in my replacement pedal like I said, this is a second-hand item off eBay, but it has got half the mileage. So hopefully this one will at least have 70,000 miles life in it. So I'll speed this part up. But this is where I used the red tape, just to hold the bolt on the end of the socket so it didn't fall off. Like I said, it is tight in there. But using the tape seemed to work. We get the second top bolt in now. Again, taping it. And then the last bolt at the bottom, which is easily accessed. And then we just need to put our panel back on. So we need to connect the two connectors. So that's the handbrake connector. I'll just pull that through ready. So the green one goes at the bottom. Just push that in. Then the black one. Bring that cable through. Push the panel back in. And then reconnect that to the handbrake switch unit like so put our two screws back in using the Torx 20 and then put the little decorative panel back on that just pushes on and then we can put the felt carpet back up in place underneath And that's the job complete. So hopefully the car will not have a starting problem now. Taking a closer look inside the old pedal. So I'm just going to open this up with my little Bosch MX2 driver. And then we can see what's actually inside. So that's five bolt, five screws there. And the connector part comes away. Like so. And there's our little circuit board. Which the contacts appear to wipe along. So it's like a potentiometer. Or variable resistor. 
seems to click as well almost like for automatic use where you'd have kick down on the gearbox so I've zoomed in the camera a bit more so you can get a better look at these connections Definitely like a kick down switch that is on the accelerator. And you can definitely see some wear on the potentiometer tracks on that circuit board. So presumably that's why the accelerator was going faulty. Because if that's worn, it's going to get a bad connection. And then if I really zoom in, we can definitely see the shiny marks on that carbon composition track of the potentiometer from the constant wear of the accelerator pedal being adjusted. So presumably the carbon has basically worn away totally so there's no connection at all and so the ECU can't get a reading and can't work out anything about the accelerator pedal position. So here's the contacts on the actual pedal itself. A little bit out of focus there. So we can see there's like two sets. There might be sort of like a secondary backup, perhaps almost like a safety device maybe. So I thought I'd try and remove the actual pedal itself and the E14 Torx seemed to fit sort of just. It did it did remove the bolt um, but I think it's like a friction fit as well so even though the bolt was off you'd have needed some sort of puller to have removed that so that was a bit of a flop that one bit. So anyway, we'll have a look at the other side. So I was able to lever off this connection wiper arm. Take a closer look at that. So you can see the four wipers, like two sets of two. There's actually space there for a third set as well. So if I undo all these little plastic tags around the outside and lift this part off, we can then see that the main section has like a double spring. And then it goes up there. And there's that click. So like I said, I presume that's for the automatic, if you have an automatic gearbox. So I'll take that clip thing out. Yeah, so it's just... I suppose that just gives you a resistance at the pedal so you can feel that sort of indentation so that you know that you've actually hit kick down because you wouldn't feel it otherwise would you and let's have a look at that double spring so it's interesting they use a double spring assembly Seems quite a neat little design that. A spring inside a spring. Okay, I'll pop all that back together. Okay, so that's nearly all back together now. We'll have another closer look at this potentiometer circuit board. Now this seems to actually clip in as well. Because they're like little spring clips. 
So if I just lift the board up, it can actually just be pulled straight out. Could have possibly just replaced this little circuit board and those contact wipers. When you look at it like that, it doesn't seem much to it now. And then it pops. Here are some detailed photographs with labels to help with identifying all the visible parts. I will put them on for only 4 seconds each with the idea that you can pause them for detailed viewing. Thank you for watching and hope this helped other home mechanics out.